we're trained to, to go to college, go into debt, go and be good employees, and maybe eventually we'll become self-employed. And that's really a, a trap. Excited to welcome Jennifer Beatles uh, to Real Estate Hacking Live. Jennifer is a nationally recognized real estate expert, educator, and investor. She's been a licensed agent for over 13 years, generating over $8 million in commissions and works with investors and owns nearly 300 units across eight states. Jenna, welcome to Real Estate Hacking Live. Hey, hey, Ben. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Have you ever thought about that? Like knowing like five, seven generations, like they're going to be able to actually know who you are at a much different level than you you have no idea who you know five generations prior to you like what your grandparents you know how they were um is, is he, you ever thought about that you know i i haven't um i mean i feel like i really need to live up my potential here yeah, does this <laughs> change if, how yeah. like now the calling you have because oh. you may be held accountable <laughs> right right show will show up show up a bit differently yeah. Yeah. So, um, building wealth, creating legacy. Um, you know, what's what's your take? My my favorite conversation to have. Yeah. Um. All right. So here's kind of like what what my focus is. Um. On this, you know, building wealth topic. Um. Obviously, I'm very much into creating monthly recurring revenue. Uh, with my real estate holdings, and then also with my companies and our software company that we launched uh, a couple of months ago. And so for me, um, I think. You know, there was a significant shift that happened in 2016 when I had a one-year-old daughter. And up until that point, um, you know, I was working as a real estate agent. I was working seven days a week. I had zero free time, but we were making a lot of money. We were generating a lot of money, which is kind of what the system is designed to do, right? We're, we're trained to, to go to college, as Wendy had, had, uh, had talked about. Uh, you know, go into debt, go and be good employees, and maybe eventually we'll become self-employed. And that's really a, a trap, right? The trap is you're still trading time for money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a moment um, when we were in Hawaii with my family celebrating my daughter's first birthday. And uh, I had some big real estate deals that were going on at the time. And so I kind of waved goodbye to my family. I said, hey, I'll meet you guys in the beach in an hour. Let me take these calls. I'll be right down. And I found myself, I spent, I think, the entire day in this beautiful condo in Maui doing all of these real estate deals and, you know, got the deals done and, you know, left the condo, went down to the beach to my family. And they were like, oh, no, we're, we're done now. We've, we've been here for like six hours. You didn't show up. And so that was a big defining moment to me. And I said, OK, I think that I'm doing this wrong. I'm still trading time for money. What would it look like? If instead I could build systems and processes and own income producing assets that then generated the income for me, the monthly recurring revenue, so that I could have more control over my time. And so that's the journey that I've been on. And, you know, really, I would say that that's like, you know, the, the box that I stand on every day is I, I want to help more self-employed people and uh, W-2, you know, employees start gravitating to the other side of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, becoming business owners, owning systems and processes or investors, right? Owning income producing assets that'll generate revenue regardless of if you show up or not. Um, and so for me, that's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all in there. And it's, it's really fun because now I have a variety of these, di again, different businesses and uh, income producing assets that do this for me. And so it's almost kind of been like an experiment of what different uh, industries can I get into so that then again, I can, I can help people. I can, I can be yeah. into growth and contribution, help them do this for themselves and kind of, you know, serve as hopefully an example of what's possible. Yeah. I love it. Cause you talked a little bit about the traditional path and, and mm -hmm. really what the traditional path is you need time and money, right? But yes. the traditional path is go out and spend all your time making the money, which you have a limited amount of time, 24 hours a day. And then the number of days is unknown. Um, but the traditional path is you do that. And then eventually you have more time. And even though your income may have dropped, hopefully your 401k or whatever um, is able to uh, pay for it. But the problem is you don't have a lot of time left in days. Right. That's if you make it that long. Right. Like, if you end up getting cut short for whatever reason, like it's just, it's, it's, it's lost. Um, yeah. So and that's why you know, we need to build wealth sooner 
so that we can enjoy it longer with the people that we love. And, and so that's for, you know, for me, it's like, how, how can we collapse time and help people get there sooner so that they can control their time and, and, you know, have more time with their, their loved ones or doing the things that they love. Yeah. And then there's a lot of ways you can, you, you can approach that. I, I, one, one thing I've liked Tim Ferriss's um, suggestion of retire over a 60 year period, like yes. uh, instead of going on, you know, waiting until you're 60 to go on the month vacations, go on like eight different four day vacations throughout the year mm -hmm. um, and have these little mini retirements. Um, and then, but you, you just happen to build business around that, which is um, it's, it allows for more exponential growth, especially when you're funneling that into real estate assets that provide cash flow. Right. Well, and then it also becomes real for others. So we travel a lot. Um, my family and I do, we, we traveled, um, I think it was 320 days in 2021. That's insane. Yeah. I've seen the post. I'm like, <laughs> it, it, it was a lot. Oh, but we had the greatest time. And, um, and you know, last year, 2021, um, I think we spent maybe about 12 weeks traveling. So it was a little bit, you know, less than we normally do. And then we have a full travel scheduled, uh, travels plan scheduled for 2023. And I think what that does though, is it also shows what's possible. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm a woman, I'm in real estate, I'm a business owner. And so, um, you know, I, I, I try to, as uncomfortable as it is, share my lifestyle so that it can be potentially possible for other families and other women that are wanting to get into this industry and just kind of see, you know, how it, how it might look for them. Maybe not everyone is into travel, but maybe you just want to be able to take your kids to school every morning and pick them up when they get out of school, right? Um, and so I think this, this idea of building wealth as soon as possible and as quickly as possible is really, really, really important for people. Yeah, and obviously the the sooner you start, the the, the more time it takes to to compound. So, um, any final any final thoughts on? Actually, um, let's go and since since you have kids, um, I want to kind of get your opinion on one of the things that Wendy talked about, and, and that that was work ethic. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you obviously have a very strong work ethic uh, to to have achieved what you what you've achieved um, in a short amount of time. Um, being in your position with with kids and being a parent and a business owner how how are you teaching work ethic to continue that on like to your kids um any, any thoughts there well so my daughter is a salaried employee in our company and we have her do work all the time um and so she does due diligence for us she's a lot of times like helping with mailers and things like that um we don't actually give her the money that she earns it gets funneled into, we have a custodian account with Vanguard. So all of it gets invested. And then the, uh, you know, whatever the limit is for the Roth IRA gets contributed to her Roth IRA. And then we have conversations as a family on a monthly basis about how our portfolios are performing. And so she's had some really great oil and gas plays. She's had some great uh, uranium investments that she made. Uranium. <laughs> Yeah, I have, a, I have a friend in the commodity space, and so he gives me some really great tips. Okay. Um, but anyways, and so it's just, you know, we, we have these conversations around um, our investments and what that means for us as a family and what that allows us to do as a family as well. Um, I think another big thing is we, we often, you know, travel, we go to other countries and we, you know, kind of experience the local culture. Um, of, you know, families working together. And, um, and I think that that's like really, really impacted her as well is just to kind of see uh, a different lifestyle than the average American family. Um, and, you know, potentially the struggles and, you know, the trials and tribulations that these other third world countries are, are going through. And so, um, you know, she's really like caught on to that. Um, the other thing that we do, so we do not buy our daughter any presents for birthdays, holidays. She gets zero Christmas presents from us. And oh, what wow. we do in, yeah, it's, it's a little, uh, probably controversial. Um, <laughs> but she's, you know, she, she gets a lot of travels and she gets to fly business class. So she, she's okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, yeah, that's but, good but, in, but instead we go and, uh, we do the secret Santa and we buy gifts for children that, uh, otherwise probably wouldn't be receiving Christmas presents. And so she's really into that. And she understands that, you know, again, we, we have the ability to do that. And rather than buy her presents, cause she doesn't need anything else. Um, you know, we get to give that gift to other children and other families and she, she loves it. Love it. Love it. Um, any, any final thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, I, again, I think in terms of like legacy for me, 
Yeah, I, I would 100% agree with Bill. It goes so much further than just my own family. It's mm -hmm. how can I impact as many people as possible? And that's my legacy. So if I can, if I can help people get into real estate deals, or if I can help, you know, agents close more business and, you know, get some free time back, that's, you know, exactly what I want my legacy to be is more contribution and, and helping others. Love it. Well, thank you so much Jennifer, awesome. for coming on and look forward to connecting with you again soon. All right. Thanks, Chris.